Well, I think first that um, I want to explain to you really what is bullying and understand um, you know, what we would need to know or be, uh, be made aware of in order to be able to investigate what we call bullying. Bullying literally has three components to it. First, there's some form of unwanted aggressive type of behavior, and that behavior can be anywhere from physical to verbal to what we call relational types of aggression. Uh, and so some form of unwanted aggressive behavior. Um, there also um, is a component of a difference in um, power in a sense or um, you know a student and not necessarily you know we often think of bullying as being this the larger student picking on the smaller student uh, this imbalance of power can be anywhere from social types of power a child that's more popular than others maybe a more attractive child than others um, it can even be a child that maybe has higher socioeconomic status uh, versus another child. So any type of imbalance in power. And then bullying is literally behaviors that are repetitive. Uh, and oftentimes parents become confused with that. If it happens one time, it's not an incident of bullying. It's a, it's a fight or it's being rude and disrespectful, or it's making fun of, um, it's not bullying. So bullying has to have the propensity to have occurred more than once. And sometimes that's where parents get frustrated. They don't understand uh, the difference in that. But when we become aware, when someone um, reports to us that there is a situation of bullying, we have a district policy, actually it's state mandated, that we have to follow to address bullying. Um, and I just want to throw out some statistics, and these are recent statistics. You know, around 28% of middle and high school students say they have received some form of bullying, okay? What's striking is 30% of middle and high school students say they're actually participants of being some form of a bully to a person. 60% um, of our youth tell us that they witness bullying, but they don't often report it. And literally when we think of reportable instances of bullying, only 20 to 30 percent of our youth that are bullied ever tell an adult, including their parents or a school staff member. And so, you know, and a lot of times they'll give us examples of why they don't want to do that. They don't want to be the snitch or they fear retribution and it'd be worse. And so in the end, many instances of bullying never get back to the school environment. Uh, and so I would encourage students to tell an adult and, uh, and, you know, to pull a staff member aside and tell them secretively. We can handle bullying without saying who told us, you know. Uh, but so I would encourage when parents or students are aware of bullying or uh, have experienced bullying to notify someone. Once we become notified, there is literally a protocol in place that we have to follow. We literally, and a timeline with that, we have to notify the victim, the victim's parents. We have to notify the bully, the bully's parents. We have to do a full-fledged investigation and actually report back our findings to both sets of parents. If indeed we determine that indeed we have a situation of bullying occurring, a safety plan has to be written. And I'm at the district office, but I am often involved in the writing of those safety plans at the school level. And safety plans can be as small as, you know, the students ride the bus together, and it can be, you know, setting one, you know, the bully up at the front of the bus and letting the victim sit in the back, so we're just separating them. It could be as simple as that, or it could literally be as intensive as changing schedules at school, uh, most intensive is literally um, separating the bully from their group or the people that they are picking on, having them be with an adult at all times so that there's an adult monitor monitoring them. And we have had those situations in our schools uh, as recent as this year, uh, very strict monitoring and a child not being allowed to be around peers uh, and having an adult with them at all times. So it just depends on the situation. And so we enact that safety plan, and we enact that safety plan until we start to see progress. And as progress 
you know, as things improve, then we're able to begin to back things down and, and move more to normal uh, interaction. And a lot of times with those safety plans, you know, counseling is required. Intervention by our school guidance counselors, maybe even outpatient counseling is encouraged. So it just depends on the level of bullying. And you were mentioning um, with the statistics, um, the middle and high school level, mm -hmm. it, is that where the, the major um, um, instances are or well, does it go down to the elementary level? Well, we are seeing bullying at the elementary level and I will say female bullying, we call that oftentimes relational aggression, we see a lot in elementary. But when you look at the national statistics, Bullying itself peaks in middle school. It is the highest in middle school. And then as, a, as children progress to high school, we see a decrease in what we call bullying, and it's more harassment, you know, different populations harassing. Uh, and so really, you, as a, on a national level, you see the peak in middle school. Um, how has social media affected bullying? Um, we, in our district, you know, we are often, uh, cyberbullying is reported to us a lot. The problem in that instance with us being able to respond to that is cyberbullying often is a behavior that occurs outside of the school environment in something that we can't control. Um, and so, um, and, cyber, and actually when you look at bullying as a whole, about 15% of youth that have been bullied say it, re it happened cyberbullying, through cy cyberbullying. So it's not, it's not the uh, most pressing type of bullying, but we are seeing it, and it does occur. Um, and it's harder for schools to respond to that. However, I do encourage parents to, um, you know, because it comes back into the school environment. It affects what we do every day. So parents need to inform us and allow us to help them be able to respond or to get some help with cyberbullying. You know, and each of our middle and high schools have school resource officers. Sometimes the intervention has to literally be law enforcement involvement. Uh, and so for parents to report that to the school and let us link them to our school resource officer who can help them in making a decision on what needs to be done about that. You know, a lot of people say, well, just take your kids off of social media. Take their phones away from them. They wouldn't have to worry about that. But phones to our youth are their world today. And that's really easier said than done. And so I just encourage for, you know, parents to report that and let us help maneuver them into the direction that they need to be able to respond to cyberbullying and get it stopped. Is there anything um, else that you would like to add that, that you think I haven't asked today? Well, many times um, in things that are publicized, whether that be um, school shootings or youth suicide, you know, that really invokes fear. It invokes a response. Many times we hear that the main culprit is bullying. Um, when you look at statistics, Bullying can be a component of that, but there are many other things uh, that we find that our youth are really being faced with today. And when you look at, at statistics across school shootings and suicides, children who choose those behaviors have numerous things affecting them at any given time. And so I just want to throw out some things for people to think about, okay, at any given time children between the ages of 15 to 24, 22 percent of our children between those ages are suffering from a diagnosable mental illness. 22 percent. In a classroom, that is one in five of our students. If we were sitting in a classroom of 24, are suffering from a diagnosable severe mental illness. Suicide in Kentucky Suicide amongst our youth, ages 10 to 24, suicide's the second leading cause of death amongst our youth in Kentucky. It's third across the United States. So our suicide rate is worse. And we often think that um, suicides occur mostly in the middle or high, as kids get older. Uh, the trend these days are we're seeing it happen younger, uh, ages 12 and under. Um, and so, we have a mental health issue amongst our youth. 
And I just want to encourage parents, any time that you become aware of a situation, whether that's bullying, or if you start to see a change in your child's behavior that concerns you, don't ignore it. Don't deny it. Reach out to people who can help you because if we can, if we can intervene early, we can avoid things like school shootings. We can avoid youth suicide. And so I encourage parents, when you start to see a change in your child's behavior, ask questions. Um, consult with the schools. Each school has a family resource, a youth service center, that their staff would help you if they decide that your child needs mental health uh, intervention. You know, in our school district, we have 14 outpatient practices that come into the schools and provide services. Our Family Resource and Youth Service Centers can help set those services up for students. And so I encourage parents, don't run from the problem. Address the problem. Address it early so that it doesn't become severe and it doesn't impact your child for a long period of time. There is hope for our children. Uh, suicide, school shootings, being a bully doesn't have to be um, the result of ongoing issues with our youth and we want to reduce those and so I encourage parents to help us in that process.